Thanks for joining us for another video. This is our review for the Storm Insight. We're here at Royal Crest Lanes in Lawrence, Kansas on the house shot, and our layouts are the same as always for the asymmetric stuff. 5x3.5x3.5 for Angel, 5x3.5x2.5 for me. Tech details for the Insight are R4S Hybrid at 3000 grit. First time we've seen it stateside, it was most recently on the Virtual X overseas and polished. And the R4S formula itself was on the Fight as a Solid and Street Fight as a Pearl four or five years ago. It's basically a stronger version of the Phase 3 cover to keep it simple. The new Tensor Core has a quite intriguing look. It's already earned several interesting nicknames, but it's a similar idea to the Rondeur Core from Roto's Rubicon and Rubicon UC2, a mild asymmetric that's designed to mimic a symmetric ball with a weight hole. Numbers are 250 RG, 053 differential, and an 013 split or intermediate differential in 15 pounds. Quick side note, it smells really good. It's cherry vanilla, but like cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper, so we're both bigger fans of it than some of the other recent stuff. Now on the lane, the general shape is familiar to the Axioms, Idols, and Rubicons. The Tensor Core creates another more directional shape that's not necessarily forward, it just isn't aggressively continuous. It goes in whatever direction you roll it in. It means it's not going to be quite as forgiving uh, as more naturally continuous balls, but it's also going to allow you more control over the shape. Sometimes it's hard to get the continuous stuff to slow down enough. It'll pick up and go if you want it to, but we'll hook set if you want it to do that too. Angel moved all over the place with it, and angles proved tricky. If she got around it, she had to get deep to get it down the lane, but then it would get a little too slow. If she moved right and closed her angle, she'd have to come more up the back of it to get it down the lane, but then it'd stand up. It seems like just another case of a ball that's too strong for her to get any regular use out of it on a house shot anyway. If she had a bit more rev rate from deep or a little more speed from straighter, I think it'd work out a lot better. Now, if you have more of a slow hook game and play around with your hand positions, it's going to look pretty good because it obviously responds directly to her angle and hand position adjustments. If you get around the side of the ball and have a lot higher speed, it's, it's going to help balance that out because while it's strong, it's not going to dive as hard through the pins as some of the more continuous or sharper balls out there. Comparing it to the Parallax, which is a more standard ASIM with a strong hybrid cover as well, the Aeroflow core is rounder and more naturally continuous, so you can see that on shots where she gets more up the back of it, it still wants to pull up and roll through the pocket, which is more helpful for her because of her speed. Now the overall strength put her pretty deep with that one too, but it blends the lane and continues more. It's too strong for her to use much either, but this is more to point out the shape difference. The Insight has a similar friction response, but the shape and look through the pins is a little different. Flipping sides, listen carefully to what I'm going to say. I don't quite understand the Insight because after seeing the details and then especially after seeing Storm 7 Waves video for it, I got overwhelming Omega Crux vibes. Numbers are nearly identical aside from a few ticks higher on the split for the Omega, but due to the shape of the tensor core, you'll be drilling into the core more than the catalyst core from the Omega, which will result in the post-drilled numbers of both balls coming a lot closer together with most common layouts. On the lane, I'm really struggling to find a reaction difference. Omega's a pearl and the inside's a hybrid. They're also different cover formulas, but once again, we'll see that cover designators can mean very little when it comes to formula design and adding surface and actual on-lane ball reaction, which is honestly all that matters. The Omega acts nothing like the stereotypical idea of what a pearl ball is or should be, and I, I feel like the Crux line already kind of fit that mild ASIM reaction slot or idea because they aren't as aggressive or firm down lane as most ASIMs, but they offer more dig than typical symmetrics. That's why balls like it and the Alpha Crux have been so popular on tour and with tournament bowlers. I'll add the Omega here in a minute, but in putting the Insight through its paces, I was only able to find a difference when I got in really deep. The Insight was slightly firmer or quicker from the deepest angles I got to, but in every other situation it responded like my Omega. Strong but smooth and rolly, very controllable, more usable than I expected, very blendy, it doesn't do anything in a hurry, it responded the same way to friction, uh, to bending it more, keeping it closer to the pocket, I just don't see a point to the Insight when we already have the Omega. Now this isn't a knock on the Insight or me dancing around trying to say I don't like it because I like the Omega. It has a more specific purpose for me and doesn't see a lot of lane time, but it's nails on heavier and tougher stuff. This is why I said to listen carefully. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks pretty good. It just feels really redundant. 
As far as ratings go, I'm giving the Insight the same numbers as the Omega. 8 for hook, 4 for length, and 4 for back end strength. Once again, that's a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to add comparisons to the Rubicon and the Phase 2 on the screen also. The Insight releases with the High Road Max on February 19th, where they'll both be available at your local pro shop. Select the next comparison you'd like to see from the links on the screen or scroll down to the description to find links to other choices. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.